This video is brought to you in part by Enermax. Enermax is a leading manufacturer of high-performance PC hardware, including their well-built, budget-friendly Cyberbron and Marble Bron series of power supplies, along with their new Lickmax 3 series AIOs, now available in white. For more information, please check out the link in the description below. What's up, guys? My name is Juan, and you're watching my channel, Blueprint PC. So in this video, we're going to talk about this guy right here, the ASRock Challenger Pro RX 6750 XT. We're going to see if it lives up to our expectations, or if it at least does what AMD says it will do. But before we do that, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my upcoming videos comparing this to the 6700 XT and then the RTX 3070. And then later on, I'm going to try to do another video showing how well this performs in 1440p, considering AMD says this is their 1440p card, and then also in 4K. We're going to do three main things in this video. First one, figure out, well, how well does it game? You know, what's the performance figures like? You know, is it any good in that aspect? Two, should you buy this if you need a graphics card? And then three, when you should or maybe shouldn't consider upgrading to this card. Alrighty, so before we jump into the benchmarks, uh, my test bench over here, my little average gamers test bench that I've always used here, uh, has been updated. After recording the scavenger build video, it did fail in a variety of ways and it was annoying and it was time to upgrade it anyway, so I did such. Now it has a Ryzen 5 5600G, an ASRock uh, Pro 4 X570 motherboard, 16 gigahertz, 16 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz G skill RAM. It still has the SSD boot drive, spinning drives for game storage, and an 850 watt gold rated power supply in the Focus G case behind me. I may change the case at some point in time, but that really doesn't matter too much in the end, other than like thermals, etc. So you're probably wondering, why did I go with that setup versus, you know, a 5900X or a 12900K or something like that? And that's because I want to leave a little bit of meat on the bone for you guys. So if you have a system that's equivalent to this or better, you should see the same results that I get or better. And then obviously, yes, if you have a lesser system, you should expect a, a lesser result. So this is kind of trying to aim for middle ground going forward here for a little while, and that's what I'll be using. And as always, as of right now, what I'm doing for the benchmarks, I'm testing in 1080p. I'll state otherwise if I do such in a later video. And I'm doing low, medium, and high settings. The default settings, no tweaks, no esports tuning, no, you know, nightmare, badass, ultra, very low, anything, just low, medium, high. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into benchmarks. That way we can get the information we need to answer those questions we were talking about. So now that we've seen the benchmarks, we can start answering some of these questions. And it's no surprise, question number one is how well does it game and does it meet our expectations? Um, ideally, yeah, it does. It performs rather well. Uh, price increase over the 6700 XT, talking about MSRP to MSRP, not current market pricing. Um, it's about on par. 
you know, it's, it's a decent tick over that, but the price to performance gain is pretty equal. So it's not like you're getting an extra bonus in performance for the extra money. You are getting more performance for more money, but it's on a, a fair ground. It's, you know, again, it's, it's not exponentially better performance for a little bit more cash, but it's still a decent amount of performance gain for the price. So the second question, should you buy this if you need a GPU? This is with the understanding that you don't have a GPU and you're in that four to $600 price range-ish and you're trying to figure out what to buy. 3060 Ti's are still overpriced right now. 3070's are overpriced. 6800 non-XT's are overpriced. So in this bracket, you're kind of looking at a 6700 XT or a 6750, you know, or unless you can find a deal somewhere on, you know, something appropriate. Yes, you can buy a 3060, but this by all means outperforms a 3060. So if you need a GPU and this is in your price bracket of that four to $600 range, sure, I recommend it. It's a good performer and it'll keep you happy. And again, I will do a follow-up video talking about 1440p and 4K. Um, I don't think it'll 4K that well, 1440p. I think it should handle pretty well for most users. So one thing I will note too though, temperature wise, it runs a little warmer than I expected. I don't know if you saw the temps that I listed there in the benchmarks, it ran a little warmer than I expected. Not abnormally hot or crazy, but a bit warmer than the 6700 XT that I have had for a while now. Uh, it is moderately noisy and not in a annoying way. You just notice it. It's like having a light fan on in the background. And again, it's very soft. I mostly notice it because when I was doing my benchmarks, I had the volume turned off. So I wasn't hearing any of the gameplay or anything like that. I was just running the benchmarks and I could hear the fans kick on when it was getting noisy. And again, if you have a headset on, which most people will do when they're gaming, you're never going to notice it unless your headset's like really crappy. So that's on you. Uh, third question, when should you or shouldn't you upgrade? If you're already an AMD user, if you have a 5700 XT or a 6600 non XT or lower card, I think it's worth the upgrade. If you have anything better than a 5700 XT, which is going to be again, 6000 series. So if you're already a 6600 XT or a 6700 XT owner, I don't recommend the upgrade. It's not going to be worth it unless you know somebody right there then and now who's going to buy your card for every dollar you have in it. I wouldn't recommend upgrading to this because it's just too big, of a, too small of a performance gap for the additional cost that you're going to spend. If you're an NVIDIA user, if you have a 2070 Super or lower or a RTX 3050 or lower. Reason being, if you have a 2080, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti, you're going to be, you know, again, within the realm of what this is going to do. Spending an extra 550 bucks or better for a few percent is not worth it. In my opinion, it may be worth it to you if you have 500 bucks or well, 550, call it 600 bucks. You know, that might be worth it to you if you want to do that. But again, I don't recommend it because it's a lot of extra cost for a, a minor performance increase. If you have a 3050, this is a decent upgrade. If you have a 3060, it's an upgrade, but it's not a big upgrade. You're talking 20, maybe at best 30% in the right game. So I, I don't think that's, again, I don't think it's worth it to buy a whole nother card unless you know somebody right then and there who's going to buy your previous card. So, and then, yeah, so 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, I don't recommend it. 3050, if you bought one because it was cheap and it was available and you want more performance still, this is a decent bang for the buck upgrade from there. So I think that's it, guys. I don't really want to get uh, too long-winded in this one as I already usually ramble on anyway. But again, I have follow-up videos coming up comparing this to other GPUs and such. Do me a favor, in the comments, drop your questions, drop your comments. I will try to read as many of those as possible, respond to the ones that I can. And outside of that, guys, uh, please hit that like, subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next one.